Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another Muslim change maker segment on Canada Today. Every week we give you a virtual look at another inspiring, talented, young or old Canadian Muslim man, uh, a man or a woman uh, who is making a difference in the lives of others, who's making a difference in the community in some way. We have pe featured everyone from community organizers to politicians to journalists and youth athletes. You can take a peek at some of the inspirational figures we have been featuring on MuslimNetwork.tv or Muslim Network TV Facebook page or social media or YouTube page. I'm your host, Taha Ghayur, once again with another exciting episode of Canada Today featuring another amazing Muslim change maker today. Of course, uh, today, you know, we're going to uh, step into the an exciting world of a reality TV um, participant uh, or you know reality TV showcasing food culture and creativity and of course I'm that means I'm talking to somebody who has done something amazing in our community um, and on TV and that is uh, Master Chef contestant Reem Ahmed she is. Uh, a top 10 finalist from CTV's hugely popular original series, Master Chef. Um, she is an, a Cana an Egyptian Canadian. Reem Ahmed uh, also has an impressive repertoire uh, next to her culinary skills. She's a self taught chef. She's a bio biomedical engineer from Ryerson University, a teacher, a mother, and a comic series creator. What a combination! Uh, Reem credits her success to working hard and believing in innovation. She regularly showcases her inspiration, advice, and passion projects to her 57,000 followers on Instagram, mashallah. Reem has also been featured on prominent news outlets like BBC Arabi uh, Arabic, uh, Al Watan News, and on several daytime segments on across CTV, CP24, and CDTV in Canada. Today, I'm excited to speak with Reem about her life experiences, uh, about her journey um, over the past few years. And uh, so welcome, uh, Reem, to our show, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure and honor. Great. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's safe to say that you are a trailblazer by being the first you know, Muslim hijabi contestant on a national TV reality show like MasterChef Canada. And, uh, you know, you have previously shared your wish to introduce Egyptian uh, food and culinary, culinary delights to the to the world, like your own grandmother's recipes with, with other Canadians. Um, so definitely, you know, MasterChef is, 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 a, is a great and ideal platform to make that happen. So, Tell us what, what pushed you to sign up for the show and uh, what was your first reaction when you uh, got to know that you are actually a contestant, finally? Well, uh, it was actually like kind of a challenge. Um, I Back then I have only been cooking for two years. Uh, after I started cooking after I got married and uh, I don't want to tell you how the start was, but my poor husband <laughs> just suffered a lot from that. You know, I experimented a lot on him. Uh, and I reached a point where like, I'm like, okay, I don't have much experience in cooking, but maybe I can use technique and uh, use maybe my engineering degree to like, uh, put engineer some new food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm like, yeah, like, for example, uh, when you're cooking chicken, uh, like the, the, the most important thing is, is the temperature, the inner temperature of your chicken, 165 degrees. And if you reach that temperature, you have a very soft and tender piece of chicken and it makes a huge difference other than chewing a dry piece of chicken. So I started using these techniques, you know, to making my food perfect. And of course, uh, input from my mother and her experience and my grandmother. And, um, and I, I, I was watching MasterChef Canada, just sitting on the couch and was watching MasterChef. 
of Canada. And my husband came in uh, and he's like, um, you seem like you're very interested. And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking of uh, applying. I can I can do these things. He's like, oh, do you think they're going to accept you? I'm like, are you like doubting me? Like, w- w- what are you saying? Do you, you think they're not going to accept me? I'm like, no, 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 no. It's just like, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it's really hard to get in, right? I'm like, okay. And right away, I, I took my phone and I searched like Master Chef Canada application, and uh, and the, the the they were actually open for auditions at the time, wow. and uh, I went in. I looked at the application. I started answering all the questions. I uploaded a photo of the food, the, the photo of myself, and a video of like uh, uh, a gathering, uh, uh, like a walima I had uh, back then in Ramadan, and. Uh, and I sent I sent the request. I'm like, yeah, you know, like I'm not. What what am I gonna lose if like I'm gonna lose the like doubting myself and blaming myself for not applying? But if I do apply, let's say they said no, like there is no loss here. Uh, like it oh. happened for me to feel like bad. So I'm just like I'm just gonna give it a chance and apply. And oh. uh, and they called me. They called um, me, and my phone was not available. <laughs> And, uh, and then they called my husband and they told him and he was like completely shocked and and, uh, and he was so busy on that day he remembered to only tell me at 12 a.m in the morning uh, oh. we were about to go to bed he's like oh uh, I, I think I forgot to tell you something you know uh, Master Chef Canada called me today I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> tell me he's like I completely forgot but wow. alhamdulillah like uh the auditions were like literally like the next morning and wow. uh and uh i emailed them right away i couldn't sleep all night and i just like started planning the dish and basically how the auditions uh work is you they give you like you pre-cook your 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 dish and uh and um they tell you it has to be something that's not going to be affected by heat or you know like don't make ice cream and take it with you because you're going to be standing in a long 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 line for hours mm. so if you really want to make something and when they come and try to eat it you're like you know sorry it's it melted uh so th- back then i made uh my uh, charcoal uh, shawarma and uh my my grandmother's recipe for cabbage rolls oh Eat salad, and uh, I took it with me, and the boxes, everything, and then uh, you go there. All the con- like people participating from all around uh, Toronto, because they do it in all the provinces, oh. uh, and uh, in Canada, in like in Toronto itself, I think there were like around a thousand people. Wow, of people. I did not count, but there was a lot of people, and they take you in in groups mm. of. 20 and then uh they tell you you have three minutes to plate your dish <clears throat> in a in a you know like in a culinary representable way mm. and uh, and the judges or previous con- contestants from a uh, previous season are, are going to come and try your food uh and i did that and and they loved it they loved the uh, cabbage rolls uh and uh, which is called mashi and uh that's how uh, it started Oh wow! So it's not just about taste, but it's also about presentation. Mm-hmm. And presentation wow. does play a big, big of huge. Course. Of course. Yeah. Eyes eat before <laughs> the stomach yeah, eats. Exactly. So that's that's powerful. And those of you who are not aware about Chef, Master Chef Canada, you know, those of you who may be watching outside of Canada, uh, it is actually you know, basically country's top, uh, one of the top uh, home chef programs or uh, events, basically that gives. Uh, home chefs a, a a chance to really win something big and of course make a make a name for themselves and make a mark of course uh, so hundred thousand dollar is of course the p- final prize uh, and you made it to among the top 10 which is phenomenal uh, how many rounds did you go through to get to top 10 uh so uh around four four rounds five well we can say five rounds because among among thousands of people that's the first round they choose 24. And then after the 24, they eliminate uh, half of the 24 right away, like in the first. And then you go down to uh, 12, 11, and 10. So I, I had uh, four episodes uh, out of uh, 10. Yes, I, I remember my family watching those, some of those shows and they're, they're on the edge, you know, uh, at the end of every round. And it's, it's congratulations, you have... Uh, that was a that was a great milestone. So, uh, tell us briefly about what this experience taught you. 
you know, and if there were any interesting challenges uh, you you had to overcome by going through this whole exercise that taught you some interesting lessons as well. Uh, the, it taught me a lot and I learned a lot of about myself through the, the experience. Uh, uh, first of all, like uh, something that most people don't know, like when you're on, on the show, um, the entire filming uh, duration, you don't have access to your family, your friends, you don't have a phone, you don't have access to internet. So you're basically just, it's you and cooking and the people around you on the show. And uh, that's why you see the raw emotions from all the contestants. Like it's just the first episode and let's say Melissa got eliminated and everyone is just crying and sad. Uh, it's because like the day or two days on the show uh, with these people feels like forever because it's just like you're isolated completely isolated from the entire world so uh i feel like this is a make it or break it this is you this is your life now mm -hmm. uh, and uh it was a bit hard for me at the time because um my son uh yeah he was a year old i was still breastfeeding him and i was <clears throat> emotionally like you know like i like like i since he was born it was me and him all the time um i wasn't working it was just the two of us and then suddenly i can't see him for a month uh and it was it was a bit challenging for me i was always emotional and every time they they asked me a question about my family i would just start crying and uh, and uh the only thing that helped me at the time to kind of focus a little bit is to uh separate these two lives i'm like okay this is my master chef canada life mm -hmm. and my family are here i they're not forgotten but i'm just gonna put you know a little bit of a barrier so i can focus on this experience now and uh and uh, the moment I started thinking emotionally and I printed their pictures and put it in the room, I got eliminated the next day. <laughs> uh, because like, you can't really, it's, 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 it's just one mistake on the show and yeah. you're, done. you're done. So you have to be either, you give it your all, you give it like 100% of your thoughts, your your experience, your, your talent, or you don't. And yeah. uh, that was one thing I learned is like, if you're there, you're there. That's it. Like, wow. I'm sure, like you're gonna see your family soon and everything. But this is one thing I learned. Like, focus on what you're doing now. Um, and the second thing I learned is, uh, is I learned about my in my mental state health as well. I went into Master Chef suffering from postpartum depression and anxiety, and I did not acknowledge it on the interviews on the show. I did not talk about it at all because I'm like, you know, I'm I know I'm not. I'm fine. I don't need help. And uh, as soon as I got eliminated and I got back home, back to reality, back to my life, I just, it hit me and I got a, a breakdown and I'm like, you know, I think I need help. And I start realizing that there is something different about me because when I was there, I was at the, my full potential. I felt like I'm doing something. And then I came back and I'm a, and I'm a, I'm a mom again. And uh, I think it took me a while to know how important it is to be a mom and uh and uh, and how powerful and how hard it is it's not an easy job it's the hardest job in the world that is also unpaid uh and i had to rewire my thinking about motherhood in order to appreciate myself because i looked down on myself I'm like oh yes i spent five years studying engineering and i like you know and then what am i doing now i'm, I'm not doing anything but Little did I know is that I'm actually raising a human being. It's not easy to raise, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, like like a great human being in this world. It's, it's you see how how things go uh, west like nowadays with raising kids. So if you have enough education, if you have the knowledge, if you have the confidence to work on raising these <laughs> little beings, uh, that's a very, very strong and powerful uh, job to do. And uh, I think what we need as mothers is to uh, have, like, know that the community and the, the society appreciates our work. And, uh, and, uh, and because like, you know, when when people look at you like, oh, when are you going to take these courses to, you know, to when are you going to start working? What are you doing now? I'm raising my kids. Oh, uh, but what's going to happen? Like, oh, you were a master chef. So what's what are you doing now? When are you opening your restaurant? When are you mm -hmm. doing that? I'm like, 
it's really hectic with just the kids like they're like you know so uh, i think so it, it kind of gives you the 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 message that you're not doing anything yes. basically and that really affects the mental states especially if, of like achievers like all immigrants here are really achievers. We're born into families of, you know, we have high expectations. They have high expectations for their daughters and, and sons, and, and they want to see you in high places. And then you're just being a mother, that's it. What are you doing next? So I think uh, like what I've learned is really appreciating being a mother and uh, and uh, and forcing it on, on our society mm. to appreciate us more, you know? That's, that's very powerful. Thanks for sharing this. It really, uh brings me uh, brings uh, to me back to uh, quite a few of course conversations i and my wife have actually about these kinds of uh, you know um situations especially being a mother and you know in our case we homeschooling our homeschool our children and my wife in in our case being the primary educator um you know it, it, it despite the fact that as as fathers uh, you're doing your best or you try your best to do uh you know as much as you can and a lot more that you should be doing at times but it is you know the 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 uh, the the burden uh, that are, are amazing incredible moms and mothers have in raising as you said literally entire generation uh of human beings of of change makers inshallah is is incredible and that should can never ever be something that we can uh, belittle or we could ever even think uh, suggest um, that, you know, it's uh, something not significant um, mm -hmm. and, you know, being on camera is more significant uh, or, you know, doing something out in public is, is a much bigger deal than actually raising children. And that, mm -hmm. that's a, it's a very sad reality that a lot of, of course, mothers and uh, uh, wives, of course, have to face day in and day out. So thanks for shedding light on this. And also thank you for cu your courage and uh, in sharing your, your own experience with, uh, you know, mental health struggles, um, that, as you were just talking about, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment. So uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you was, what was the public's response, um, you know, when you were on MasterChef Canada? Uh, what kinds of responses, positive, negative, or maybe neutral, that you got when, when you were on that show? Oh, it, it honestly, it felt like a dream because it was a dream. Like you don't get these uh, experiences much often in your life, and, uh, and people were just like going crazy. And and I just I woke I put the news that I'm on Master Chef. I woke up the next day and like like my my post on Facebook was shared over a thousand times and and like people were messaging me, congratulating me. And uh, they were like excited to see the show because that was just the promo. And uh, I was over, I felt, it literally felt like I was on a cloud back then. And uh, most of the, the comments were positive and only like there are of course haters are here and there around, but if you put a lot of light on them, then you know, they will be the focus and our focus now is positivity and how to take this uh, response into like building on it into a positive uh, mm. action. Uh, so uh, most of the the, uh, the 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 comments and the responses were positive. Um, our community was also like a lot of people wanted to collaborate with me. A lot of people were messaging me. Uh, famous bloggers were posting on their uh, social media about like, oh, the first hijabi on MasterChef Canada. So it was it was incredible. You remember? Mm. What, what did it mean for you, actually, mm. personally, being a first uh, hijabi on the show? And, you know, considering the fact that uh, your initial motivation really came from a challenge, mm -hmm. um, it's not like you were cooking all these years and you're preparing to be on the show. You know, uh, I don't know if it's right for me to say, but it's almost accidental that you, as you said, you know, uh, one night you and your husband were having a nice uh, chat and, you know, you, you become emotional and you said, no, I'm going to take this on as a challenge and I'll just make it happen. And you, mashallah, made it happen. So, uh, and that's really about goes to show the kind of, the power of willpower, of course, um, uh, that you have, which is amazing. But um, I'm wondering, you know, as you journey through this and, you know, you saw an explosion uh, on social media of people, you know, sharing all sorts of messages and hopefully mostly positive. 
Mm. What does it mean for you personally? And what does it mean for a lot of people who are actually watching you all this time and that entire journey of going through this MasterChef? Um, you know, uh, at the beginning, uh, I did feel a lot of pressure and uh, I was very nervous because I, I knew I was going to be judged head to toes once I'm there on TV. And uh, I'm not just being judged as me, Reem. I'm being judged as a Muslim, as a hijabi, as every every single thing I'm saying, every act I'm doing is going to be judged not just by the Muslim community, but also the non-Muslim community. And I felt like pressure from both sides. I'm like, what are they going to say about me? And, uh, and how can I do this to represent uh, myself, the things I believe in, and uh, show my cooking skills and talent all at the same time? Mm. And um, it, it was a lot. At some point, I, I was talking to my husband. I'm like, I, I feel like, you know, I am going to pass on that. And uh, I, I don't think, like, I'm, I'm, I'm in a state where I want to be judged that much. Uh, but then I, I, I remembered, you know, um, <clears throat> alhamdulillah, like uh, wearing a hijab for, I, I don't remember how long now, I think I wore it since grade uh, nine, I think. And it was by choice. I My mother actually told me, you know, you're too young to wear it at the time. And I'm like, no, I'm going to wear it. I want to wear it. I love it. And um, alhamdulillah, I've been wearing it since then. Uh, and I remember she told me something. She told me, you know, like, it's a big responsibility to wear a hijab. And uh, it's not just a piece of clothes you're putting on your head. You're you're literally representing, uh, like, our faith. You're representing uh, a Muslim woman in, in, in this uh, attire. And uh, and it's not an easy thing. So if you come later and say you want to take it off, that's on you, okay? Uh, so uh, please do it with confidence and, and make sure you actually want to wear it. And I told her, yes, I do want to wear it. And and uh, I've been wearing it, alhamdulillah, since then. And, uh, and uh, now seeing how uh, Muslim women struggle uh, these days with their hijab, uh, with their taking it off, it's been like a, a trend going on. And uh, it's really sad. And it's hard to judge because you don't know what every person is going through. And uh, no one is better than the other, but what they are wearing. But uh, if you're wearing it, you're wearing it and you're presenting. So... You know, alhamdulillah, you do your best to represent it the best way possible. So I felt, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm wearing it, then that's my chance to go there and try to empower others. Because we also have this idea that if you're wearing hijab, well, you can go on TV. They're not going to accept you. They're not going to take you in. And you know, the first thing they told me uh, when I went for the auditions and they took me, like after they tried the food they liked and they took me in for the camera uh, interview, they were like... Uh, where where are you i'm like who me and like no like where are your like people where are the people wearing a hijab like you are literally the first one to apply mm. i'm like really wow. I, you know because like when i applied i did not know i was the first hijabi to apply because mainly what you would think is oh they're not gonna accept the, they don't want a hijabi on the show or mm -hmm. but the thing is no it's it's us like we have this uh <clears throat> idea that we can't and uh, uh and uh, alhamdulillah like uh, i'm so glad i did that and i applied and mm -hmm. um and the, the the like what it means to me is if only one girl a nine year old or a ten year old saw me on tv and and thought oh mashallah she's wearing a hijab and she's She's doing a dream, something that she would dream of doing as well. Like I know a lot of little girls want to be on cooking on TV on shows, and uh, and if that's gonna impact only one girl and make her feel feel confident about her decision of wearing hijab, then that that means everything to me. That's that's powerful, and thanks for doing that. Of course, if if it is not even for yourself, if you know if there was as you said one person who actually is inspired to actually do something and believe in themselves. This is, this is very powerful. So thank you for sharing that. Who, who are some of the people uh, who have been motivators in your life and who have had positive influence and, and maybe some of your mentors? Uh, who are some of the mentors out there, even before you got on this show, that you would give some credit to? Um. My family, my family, and my family, uh, they have been my backbone and everything. Uh, without them, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Um, 
my husband, my mother, my father, my brother, uh, and my kids too. Uh, mm-hmm. And you know, my fa- my my uh, my husband's family. All of them were just like they, we were a team, and uh, I, they they all encouraged me and pushed me to to go there. And I do admit, like I was not the best cook back then. Uh, that was three years ago now. Subhanallah. Yeah, almost three years ago. Uh, but they all like. They were like, Reem, uh, let's practice. <laughs> my mother started, you know, uh, sending me recipes. Even like my aunt from Egypt, she was like, oh, remember this and remember that. And uh, wow. and my husband was like, Ahmed, are, I'm, you're going to be with a, with a one-year-old on your own for almost a month. Are you okay with that? He's like, Reem, I can change a diaper. So don't worry, like, just go and uh, I'll take care of it. And uh, they were they they were the ones who inspired my brother. He's like, I'm hundred percent sure you're gonna at least make it to top five. I'm like, okay, relax there, <laughs> okay, relax. But thank you. And uh, he was actually very shocked when I came back on top ten. And my husband too is like, what happened? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I don't know. I miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, they were my support, and uh, and and my father always he keeps it he's like oh you're you're at 20k followers now oh you're you reach 40k and why did your followers go down by yourself i'm like mashallah that you like you're you're watching he's like i'm so proud of you so i think um the family my family is just you know they're everything if you don't have like imagine my husband uh would have been unsupportive was like oh why are you going there are you gonna leave me alone with the kid i, I wouldn't have i would be like okay sure yeah I'm, I'm not gonna go uh so i i like they are the base like the the, the pyramid they are the like the core of the, the building block so yeah. Very interesting. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing that very some of your personal stories already. And I was gonna, I was uh, wondering, you know, you talk, uh, you did talk a little bit about mental health, and you talked about just right now, you know, having positive people around you, positive influence. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you did discuss a moment ago about your own mental health challenges. One mm-hmm. of the things that you have been doing a pretty good job at is through your social media followers uh, or platform uh, that you share some very you know beautiful uh, pieces of advice uh, about your own life lessons you talk about uh, you know positive attitude you talk about dealing with hardships Um, why is this important to you for you to use your platform and actually share such messages uh, about struggle about dealing with you know, struggle, dif- difficult situations, mm-hmm. uh, especially considering that you are a social media influencer um, and you're using that to actually raise awareness about mental health. Why is that so important to you? I mean, uh, you know, and the reason I'm asking also is because, you know, you are a biomedical engineer, you went into culinary arts and you experimented with that challenge. You You did a lot of great things already for yourself. Why is mental health such a important topic for you to address why not something else mm. uh you know uh, it, it was really hard that like if you have uh, went back in time two years ago and told me Reem, you're gonna be talking about your struggle uh, with postpartum depression and anxiety on social media and be like no i don't want to share this is my experience i don't want to share that i don't want people to see me weak or or to look down on me and and feel uh, like mm. empathy and, and and you know uh and uh I realized, you know, uh, through my process and that there is a lot, a lot of mothers and women going and, and generally mental health is not just for, for mothers or, or women. Uh, it's for everyone. Everyone is struggling through and going through their, their, their own struggle and they're in their own bubble that it's really hard to get out of that bubble by yourself. You need a lot of hands trying to dig in and get you out of there. And, um, I felt like, you know, if sharing my story is is going to give hope to other people, others, you know, that you can also come out of there and uh, and it's OK to to be struggling. It's OK. It's not like it's not something haram or aib or or, or it's not going to make you a lesser person. Like, yes, I was on MasterChef. I was on TV. I was on BBC. I was on there and that. And I am also struggling with this and that and that. And I, I'm trying. I made it out at some parts. I'm trying to find 
like coping uh, strategies and, and, and exercises to help me go through my anxiety. And uh, I'm still working on it. So if I am doing uh, that, then you can do it too. And I'll give you my hand and help you. And uh, and and th this is why I'm sharing. I, 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 I get sometimes, you know, like when I shared my first comics uh, about like weight gain through uh pregnancy and uh, postpartum and how it affected my body and uh, and you know like you just feel like you're you're that's not you and uh, the comments you get are like oh, why why do you look still look pregnant or or why did you gain so much weight well at first when you're struggling you don't know how to answer that but why because alhamdulillah like i made two humans so this is not easy do it and then tell me ask me that question yourself uh, and uh, the, the people are very harsh on judging you and judging your body and and they're like oh you, you can just work out and eat healthy what's wrong okay come make me healthy meals and and babysit my kids and I'll, I'll do that but you can't just judge without giving a hand or helping uh, so if my help like me sharing is is at least going to be a virtual uh, support for others, then I would share everything. And even if people uh, feel empathy or, or think that the reason I'm sharing that is for them, like, oh, I need some people, someone to tell me, oh, oh we're with you, you're not alone. No, that's not the, the, the goal. That's not why I'm doing these comics or sharing these stories. I'm doing this because I know there are thousands of people out there suffering and struggling. And uh, we, can't, we can't let this go on for much longer than this. Uh, mental health is real. It's happening. Happening and it does not go with the, on its on its own. We, we, it's like you know, if you're sick, you, you do go to the doctor. You, yes, we say Allah, please help us, alhamdulillah, and you make dua and everything. But you also go to see a doctor to you know heal that broken bone and, and, and or or give you that medicine to make you feel better. Same thing goes with mental health. Actually, if you look at the scientific uh, like explanation be behind mental health there are chemicals in your brains changing it's hormones changing and yes it's really hard to diagnose it's really hard and expensive to do an mri to see mri to see how your brain changed by uh the episodes you're going through and uh, not a lot of doctors would do an mri to see that or to know that and i know people really need a hard proof to believe things mm. they're like okay i'm sick show me like well you know it's really hard to show it's very expensive to show and uh, and that's why i think people are struggling to accept that idea and uh, mm. i also like um discover through my, my my process even your closest closest uh person would not know what you're going through even if you're talking but it's really hard to put yourself in someone else's shoes and and know like what what they're going through or why like yes i'm sitting on the couch in this bubble and i can't even get up why why it's, just get up like get up give me your hand i'm like i can't like it's really hard and they, you wouldn't understand why it's hard to get up until you go through the same thing, unfortunately. So uh, the, this is the, 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 the struggle about mental health. You have to really either went through the same process to, to understand or you have to be a professional. So that's mm -hmm. why we say seek professional health. And yes, maybe you won't feel comfortable with that social worker or psychiatrist, then change it, go to someone else. But don't just go and talk to your friends and family and then blame them later for not understanding or calling you, uh, you know, a attention seeker or that or that, mm -hmm. because it's not their job to 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 give you uh, an answer. The, it's, it's a professional's job. And and this is where I uh, I started getting better is when I actually seek professional help. I went and I talked and and I she told me things I never knew about myself. I understood things I never understood. So it's really important to seek professional health and not mm -hmm. all professional uh, like not all um, support is paid. I, when I went to mine, <clears throat> it was covered uh, not by insurance, but by by the government because uh, uh, I had a questionnaire when I was pregnant. They were asking me like if I go, was going through something and I was like, it was my second pregnancy and i told them yes i had postpartum anxiety and depression in my first pregnancy and i'm afraid it goes on until the second one too and uh, they transferred me to a social worker and then the social worker transferred me to a psychiatrist i took like few uh few um sessions and and just these few sessions made a huge difference and uh, and made me kinder to myself and understand why I'm thinking that way or how, how can I fix that 
uh, thought process. Mm -hmm. And usually when you talk about postpartum depression, anxiety, people get scared because they think, oh, you don't want to be a mother. You hate your kids or you're going to harm them. And that's absolutely what, what there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, different uh, diagnoses to postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And for me, it started with anxiety. I was scared for my my kids. I any anything uh, I would get like these episodes of bad things happening to them, and it would freak me out so much. And I did not know how to control it. I would be just sitting in peace, and uh, I see like a pen, for example, beside my kid, and an episode, entire episode scenario A to Z from end start to end, just goes in my head, and I I start crying. It's like it's, it's as if it happened even though it did not happen. Like my husband would look at me and he's, he sees me crying. He's like, what happened? I'm like, I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it's so bad and it's so like graphic that I don't even want to talk about it. And um, and of course, when you go through this, it's going to lead to depression. You're like, yes, I don't want to go on the street. What if this car hits, like does something bad? And 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 then I just started isolating myself in my bubble. I. I had I wasn't this I wouldn't answer phone calls I wouldn't uh, go outside just getting up to you know dress and, and go for a walk was a burden so I just wanted to stay home protect my kid and that I was it and that that that's and then I started looking at myself and what am I doing I'm just being a mother and and you know it took a lot of rewiring and it's really hard to change your thought process when you're almost 30 years old and uh but you would be surprised by how practice does make things better yes. so you keep repeating things your, to yourself and steps i i found that like saying a scar protection a scar in a, in a specific set of numbers with the names that you know i want to i feel like you know i i, I need a lot to protect them help me a lot control my anxiety uh and you you do go yes i you know uh, seeking uh like praying and having having confidence that, you know, what happens, happens, and it's Allah's will is very important to understand that concept, but also it's very important to uh, admit that you have a problem and go to a professional. Wow. Well, thank you for your courage, actually, in sharing the, such deeply personal sort of journey through anxiety and dep depression. And I really hope, uh, you know, a lot of people will learn from, from your story and your struggles and, inshallah, have the courage to actually do the same, come out of it successfully by seeking the right professional help, by seeking Allah's help, by seeking family support and all support networks that we need in our societies and our communities around us. So so thank you for sharing that. Um, and, you know, so this leads me to another creative side of yours, which is beyond cooking. And that is and you alluded to this and we talked a little bit about it. And that is really the animated storytelling. Mm -hmm. And again, through that animated storytelling, you you are you know, telling very powerful and important stories um, about life and life lessons and some with humor and so on. So I wonder, again, you know, what, you know, for instance, like your, some of your stories, they, they are being shared uh, with, you know, 500,000 uh, people on, uh, or have 500,000 um, views on TikTok, for instance. So they are very popular and you are addressing, again, similar social issues there. So what's the story behind cartoons? Why not some other platform? Uh, what what made you to go to cartoons uh, to actually tell your stories? Well, uh, like from from my 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 like that's as for me, I usually like seeing cartoons. Uh, like it's very short. It's very um, you know straight to the point, and it's very powerful. Draw, drawing is is also an art like cooking and uh i i did study one year back in egypt in, in art uh, and i i i always felt that art is a very po powerful tool to express your feelings because uh, as i said there are some certain things that i went through even if i talked about it it's really hard to you know to to ex explain or 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 or, or say in, in in words, uh, so I felt uh, you know uh, I even thought of it uh, in uh, as a comic. They're still not they're still not out yet, but I mean uh, you can you can easily uh, give the message uh, through the comic, 
and, and people would understanding with minimal uh, wording there. And uh, nowadays everyone is busy, TikTok fast, you know, and they want something light and, and not a huge paragraph explaining this or that. So I thought, well, maybe the comics would be uh, a good idea and uh, it wouldn't just be sad and depressing all of it, you know, it's not all going to be lessons and stuff. So I also said, well, I'm going to be including some funny uh you know uh, scenarios that happened with my cooking or with the kids mm -hmm. or or some causes that i believe in them my next comic is actually going to be about uh, the yemeni crisis and mm -hmm. um and uh, i'm, I'm inshallah, I, hopefully it, it does uh, go somewhere and uh does reach more people and uh and and help you know mothers even understand their feelings because sometimes you don't really understand why mm -hmm. and what you're going through well, thank you. Excellent. Um, we've heard that you're you have um, a, a, an ambitious idea of starting your own restaurant one day. Uh, supposedly, Reem from the Heart uh, restaurant, uh, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, and the whole idea is to introduce, inshallah, one day, uh, Canadians to or Torontonians to Egyptian uh, flavors, Egyptian cuisine. So. Um, how is that uh, business plan, you know, coming along? And uh, w when do we expect the grand opening? If, is that something <laughs> on the horizon or is that something long term? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, right after MasterChef, that's that's actually I, I start looking into it much more. And uh, I reached a point where I, w I actually saw a place and uh, we started planning the design and everything. And just something like, praying as Sahara and like my entire family were very like yes yes let's do it and uh and then suddenly I don't know like at some point we're like all against it and uh I was like I feel something is not okay to do it now and especially that you know I'm still st we're starting our family Ahmed was doing his PhD he just graduated uh, this year alhamdulillah right. and, uh, and it was going to be really tough for our family to start such a huge huge project mm -hmm. uh, with two little kids and uh, my husband studying mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I felt like well uh, you know if I want to do this, I want to do it right. I want to do it in the right time. And I, mm -hmm. I don't just want to serve food because food for me, is, it's not just about eating. I don't want a restaurant where there are tables and chairs and here is your food and that's it. It's for me, like food is about memories. It's about uh, people coming together in this amazing environment that takes them back to like their childhood memories or, or back home or whatever it is. I want to give people the entire Egyptian experience, not just the food, mm -hmm. but the feelings, the decor, the the flavors. I want the flavors to be point on, not just Egyptian food as well, because there's a difference. You can do Egyptian food and you can do Egyptian food. So um, mm -hmm. this is this is what it means for me. Maybe that's why it's it's very delayed, and especially with the Corona happening, the lockdown. And I'm very thankful we did not do it. <laughs> Yes. It would have been really bad, but alhamdulillah, <clears throat> and uh, I'm praying for all the business, small businesses and the restaurants. It's very hard and, and they must be struggling a lot. So may Allah make it easy for them and everyone affected by this crisis. Uh, so, um, so yes, it's going to be delayed a little bit, especially after this uh, crisis. Uh, the planning is happening. It's all, it has always been there. Uh, it's just about the right time. I, 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 I follow my heart a lot with these decisions, and I praise the heart a lot, and I see where things take me. So, um, well, maybe it's going to be next year. Maybe it's the year after. Maybe it's after five years. Uh, but it's, it's coming soon, inshallah, you know, <laughs> in the future. Uh, right now, actually, my next project is uh, doing my own cooking show. Uh, oh home and uh it's almost planned um uh, we're gonna have to wait maybe around two months more uh for it to come out and uh i'm very excited i'm not gonna share any details <laughs> it's gonna be a surprise and uh and inshallah i hope like everyone enjoys it and, and likes it awesome really looking forward to a pleasant surprise inshallah whenever that happens. So thanks and congratulations on that milestone as well, as soon as it's launched, inshallah. A oh. um, couple more questions as we wrap up. Mm. Uh, you know, there's so many young people 
in our community, so mm. many young Canadians, so many Canadian Muslims um, who have talents, who have amazing uh, skills, unique skills. They are, you know, burning with a desire to share their creativity. What advice would you give them uh, <laughs> Now, having gone through this amazing experience yourself, uh, what 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 experience? What advice would you give them if they're aspiring artists today, or aspiring, you know, anybody with actually anybody with creative skills out there? Mm -hmm. uh, my first advice, I would tell them: be yourself. Uh, don't try to pretend to be someone else, and uh, be true and honest to yourself. Uh, work hard, because nothing is gonna come out of the air you have to work hard for it and uh work hard by researching work hard by connecting to those who are in the same field um if they're not kind well that's on them but try to most most people are kind and, and try to reach out and uh, send them well do you have uh how can i learn from this what's your advice i'm starting this uh what can i do how can i do it and uh and 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 the family is very important. So let's say you you want to be a photographer and your family wants you to be a doctor. Uh, family will, will eventually come along when they see that this is a successful choice. But if you want to be a photographer and a mediocre photographer, then that's that's you're proving the, your family right and you're proving yourself wrong. So if you want to do it, do do it good. Like study hard and go for it. It's not just about having a YouTube channel and that's it, or you want to be an influ influencer, then you're going to post a few pictures of your fashion, your clothing, and that's it. And, and as I said, like you're, it's not by the number of followers you have. I, I have many, so many times said the number of followers you have on social media does not reflect your success. Uh, and people should not be judged judged by how many followers they have. It sh they should be judged by the work they're putting into their 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 lives and how they're impacting other people and uh and also try to take your work not just to be about you but to lending hands to people around you uh empowering others and 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 like the best way to to, to get yourself out of a crisis is to help others in need uh and, and and that's 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 very important even if it's hard even if it's unfeasible try your best donations um uh, all these things like our our job in the world is to make this world a better place and we can't do it alone we have to do it together so if everyone is going to take pride on being who's best and who's better and who has more followers then we're not gonna get it anywhere uh, you will find that the most successful people are those who uh like in a group like i the story mm -hmm. that my my father always used to tell me is like you know like when you, you take one stick you can easily break it but you know, if you have six of these sticks and you try to break it, it's it's really, literally impossible. And uh, um, in the Quran, like wa tasimu bihablillahi jamian wa la tafarraku, and and it's it's like Allah is telling us, you know, be one hand and do not um, uh, separate yourself from each other, because mm. humanity is about us being a group. And uh, well, if this person did not work to work out to be in your group, find another one. Uh, mm. Stay connected. Because uh, I learned this from my experience when I was struggling. I isolated myself, and I, I thought I would be stronger that way. And maybe I needed to do that for some time. But in the longer run, you do need people, and people do need you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of um, young, as as aspiring change makers out there who want to do a lot of good things for society, for community. Um, and one of the, I guess, perceptions people have is that you need to be a, a social media influencer to be able to make, bring about a change. Uh, mm -hmm. And you need to have, as you said, like thousands of followers. And sometimes your very pure intentions of doing something great for the community turns into a very, you know, narcissist, uh, you know, of attitudes and and it really starts becoming all about yourself yeah. so what advice do you have for young people young girls especially who want to young muslim girls young girls in in canada who want to do something better for the world as you said you know want to bring about a positive change 
and they are turning to, of course, to social media. Mm. Any advice you have for, for those individuals who are using social media, or trying to social, use social media to bring about change, uh, but, you know, uh, maybe they're not there yet, or maybe they may end up doing it the wrong way. So any advice you have for them as we conclude? Um this is not just for them, it's also for me, and it's for everyone. And uh, subhanAllah, like our hearts are always changing in Iman and in Taqwa and everything. And it's and it's something that we really need to know. It's not like if your your taqwa is amazing and you're you're such a good person. It's not it's not you can't take credit for that. It's from Allah. So if Allah chooses to make you uh, a good person, you will be a good person. So never ever feel uh, a narcissist, never feel that, well, this is me, my credit, I did this, I'm wearing a hijab, I'm wearing like, uh, like you know, my, my clothing is good, I'm covering, and that's me. No, it's not you, it's Allah. Allah blessed you to take the right decisions. Uh, so I would say the first thing we do is we need to work on our hearts and we need to start what, like, you can't build a, a, a good society without the, these small building blocks, which is our hearts and ourselves. So if we want the, the, the society or the community or, or the world to be better, we have to start working on ourselves and stop judging others. Uh, we have this amazing talent as a community that we love judging people. And, and like if you see uh, famous influencers and go into their comment sections, it's brutal. It's brutal as if everyone turned into a judge and into Allah and Safarazim and they're like judging everyone. Oh, you can't wear this or you can't do this uh i i say if we put our energy on changing ourselves we are all full of flaws and mistakes and and it would take us years and years maybe until we die to fix these mistakes mm. and and flaws so maybe if we focus on doing that and building ourselves and 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 believe me you, there is no limit to building yourself and and making yourself a better person uh and if you just focus your energy, your energy on that you will reach to, to to the place i like i won't tell you go and open an instagram account and start doing no f start fixing yourself start uh if you see like you have like different or or weird or interesting ideas uh try to see if there are going the right way, try to see how you can uh, implement them and, and start building blocks piece by piece. I always say you can, if you look at the final goal, you'll always be traumatized and, and overwhelmed. I'm like, like if for me, if I just thought about, oh, I'm going to be on TV, I'm going to be on MasterChef and I would just be like, oh, this is, this is too, I don't think I will be there. Uh, but it's, it's about the small steps that you take to reach that goal. Uh, oh, first step, well, I'm going to open, take my phone and open and search MasterChef Canada auditions. The second step is you have this application that has 10 points, for example. The third step is filling one point, the second point, and, and so on. And then you apply. That's another step. And after you apply, then you're going to wait for this decision that you have no hand in, but you can always like hope and pray for it. So as long as you did your best there, then that's, that's the thing. You have to work and do your best and work hard on fixing and, and, and improving yourself. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, as we conclude, um, if in one minute, if you were to share your top three life lessons, and mashallah, you're still young, you have a long way to go and long way to, inshallah, to achieve a lot more things. What would be those top three things in one minute? Oh, uh, top three. <laughs> <Putting on spot. laughs> uh, as I said, uh, family comes first. Always prior to prioritize <laughs> make your family a priority and and uh and no one will ever love you as much as the family does so priority number one is your family uh after allah allah is like you know the, the most important thing in, in our lives second thing don't really give much attention to what people think about you people will think a lot of things about you and if you sit down and 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 emphasize on their thoughts on their judgment you're not gonna go or get anywhere as we said work on yourself and and, and try to accept uh advice uh that's the third thing uh i had a hard time accepting uh advice and uh, accepting you know people tell me you're wrong uh and uh and that's the third thing uh, accept advice 
and and see like maybe they have a point maybe they're right maybe you're wrong and you you you'll be wrong a lot of the time so it's okay to accept other people's advice and uh there are a lot of a lot of uh advices and things i would tell myself but i think these are the three most great important. excellent excellent i really appreciate you taking the time to share with us all this amazing amazing um you know wisdom filled uh, and packed journey uh, that you shared with us today in a matter of about 50 minutes um so as a self taught chef and engineering professional and a storyteller and educator and mother you have so many hats that you wear uh, if people want to find you online and learn more about your work whether it's your cartoons or uh, mm -hmm. any other things where would they find you where where should they come and and go to basically to follow you or learn more about you Instagram and I'm always on Instagram uh, chef Reem Ahmed uh, okay. you can find me there always I uh, and and the logo is my my cartoon uh, me with the kids Yahya and Hannah mm -hmm. uh, uh, so my logo is a cartoon about being a chef a mom and I don't know if some of you noticed but the iron ring is in my finger there as well as an engineer so <laughs> uh, yeah so this yeah. is like cream from the heart mom uh chef and engineer so. awesome that's great well with that um you're gonna have to bring a closure to this program it's such an amazing conversation uh I'd love to talk to you more and hope to have you more often uh reem on this show so mm -hmm. thank you once again to Sareem ahmed for inspiring uh, a new generation of chefs and storytellers and creative people in our community we look forward to having you again so uh with that uh my friends um we're gonna have to conclude um uh, thanks to davanet for bringing this uh you know show as our marketing uh, uh partner here uh, in the community thanks to nergis nafwi as well as sumaya barakat for being our uh, producers on the show today and once again, you're watching a, a wonderful show today uh, of, of our edition of um, Canada Today. And more specifically, we were talking to Reem Ahmed, who is a Muslim change maker. So uh, please follow her and follow us uh, on social media. Um, I'm your host, Taha Ghuyur on Canada Today. And nice to see you once again. Take care. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi